Howdy guys, Jimmy Song here. In this video, I'm going to talk about Ethereum. Um, and I know, I know, I'm a Bitcoin maximalist, so I'm all biased, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I wanted to talk about why Ethereum keeps having problems, right? I'm going, I'm going to give you three reasons. But um, yeah, there's been a lot of problems for Ethereum, uh, especially recently. They canceled the Constantinople hard fork. Uh, there was apparently a re-entry uh, attack vulnerability. Um, you know, in the past, they've had the DAO hack, parity bug, um, lots of smart contracts that got, um, you know, that that were, um, you know, vulnerable and so on. There, there's just been a lot of problems uh, with Ethereum. And I wanted to talk about why, because um, to a large degree, it's, uh, it's, it, you know, it's a systematic flaw and not necessarily a one-off. So let's talk about some of those problems. So uh, first first problem is that there's a lot of bad tech in there. Um, you know, it started a while ago and, um, and the idea behind uh, the Solidity language and everything else was they wanted it, wanted, um, smart contracts to be programmable by anyone that knew JavaScript. Now, that's a good sentiment in theory. It turns out that that's probably the absolute wrongest model ever, right? Like, um, uh, you, you, if you just because you can write JavaScript on a web page does not mean that you know how to secure people's money. And uh, you know, a, a flaw in a JavaScript and in some web page means that maybe the user sees like a 404 or some error or something like that. Not that big a deal, right? In the grand scheme of things, right? Like they, they, they just uh, maybe, maybe had a bad uh, customer experience or something like that, and that might hurt your reputation. But overall, it's 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 not that big a deal. Um, you make the same mistake in a smart contract. Well, then the person's money is either locked up forever, or it gets stolen, or something like that. There, there's a lot of reasons why you don't want, you know, a JavaScript developer to be doing smart contracts, right? Like you need to learn a little bit more about security, adversarial thinking, and so on. Uh, and that brings me to uh, another tech part, which is, and you know, they purposefully made it Turing complete, and that makes it extremely hard to analyze. Now, if you have a, a, a language like OCaml or um, you know, some uh, I think uh, what, what's that other one, Closure, I think, or I mean, there there are languages that you can use that will formally verify whether or not a program will do what you think it will. Solidity is not one of them. And uh, and that was a very poor choice uh, if you were going to do Turing completeness. Now, if you don't do Turing completeness, it's, it, it's much easier to analyze because you don't have loops and things like that. But that was their whole value prop uh, when, when, they, when they started was, oh, we're going to have turn complete smart contracts, code is law, blah, blah, blah. Um, of course, they ended up rolling back all of that. But that, that was a significant part of their uh, value prop. And um, it, it, it ended up coming back to bite them significantly because turn complete contracts are really, really hard to analyze. There's, it's not a coincidence that most of the contracts on Ethereum are ERC-20 or ERC-721, uh, things that everyone knows already works, right? Like, uh, and um, for the most part, you don't actually need Turing completeness at all to write either of those contracts. In fact, you could do that on Bitcoin today. <laughs> like, you, 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 could do, uh, you could do something like color coins on Bitcoin. You can do, um, you know, uh, unique, um, uh, unique tokens, uh, which is kind of what ERC 721 is. Um, you know, Christopher Allen's been working on uh, decentralized web of trust uh, using very similar ideas um, just on Bitcoin. So uh, that that tells you that Turing completeness is is much more of a hindrance than anything else because. You know, if they didn't have it, you would still be able to create ERC-20 and ERC-721 tokens, uh, but you wouldn't have all of these vulnerabilities. So it was a terrible technical choice. Um, and so in many ways, uh, you know, Ethereum suffers from the fact that they chose the wrong tech for the job and, uh, and they made some really bad choices at the beginning, uh, which brings me to my second reason why Ethereum keeps having problems and that's centralization. Um, now, a lot of people will argue with me, oh, you know, the uh, you know, some guy in the SEC said that it might not be, uh, it's sufficiently decentralized or whatever. That person has no idea what they're talking about. Like, think about it. They did a crowd sale at the very beginning, right? Like, uh, and, and that's how they raised the money that they needed to, to, um, to develop Ethereum. Uh, but the fact that they had somebody to pay, somebody collect, somebody, uh, distribute, somebody, uh, that, you know, hired all these people, that's about as centralized as you can get. And it hasn't really changed. Um, they, they printed a bunch of tokens for themselves. Um, 
a significant amount, in fact, and uh, they they ran out of uh, a lot of the funds that they raised. They had to raise another round, uh, which itself is like kind of ridiculous for something quote unquote decentralized because you know, how, how do you raise money for a decentralized thing? Like who gets that money? Who, who, who distributes it? Who does whatever? Uh, I think, uh, th those people ended up getting, uh, Ethereum token, future Ethereum tokens for, uh, you know, some amount of money and things like that. So that, that centralization, uh, plays a lot into it because, uh, you know, if you, if you know, uh, you know, like the, tech that Vitalik tends to choose and things like that. He's he's totally a neomaniac. He likes things that are new, right? Like he, uh, the Ethereum address format is uh, completely different than Bitcoin's, which, which, which at the time was base 58. And he did it because uh, he could, right? Like uh, base 58 worked fine. Uh, and if, if, uh, if you wanted something more secure, that's probably what you would have chosen. Instead, he chose the Ethereum uh, format, which has zero X and then like a bunch of hexadecimal and, uh, uppercase and lowercase and, uh, letters and all that, all, all that stuff. It turns out that, uh, it doesn't have a checksum. So that means that if you mistype an address at all, right? Like uh, it's off by a single letter, all your coins disappear. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> Whereas in base 58, you get a letter wrong, uh, wallet Im almost immediately detects that uh, the checksum doesn't validate. So they go, okay, I think you made a mistake. Can you check the address again? Right? That's a feature that he purposefully didn't bring in because he's a neomaniac. And you know, he did the turn completeness for the same reason. He, he made Solidity a brand new language for that reason. Um, there's a lot of ways in which that centralized uh, decision making hurts Ethereum, right? Instead of some sort of a consensus process or having a lot of people review it it's just sort of whatever vitalik wanted he got and that 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 was uh that that hurts the technology that hurts a lot of uh that exposes that makes the attack surface a lot larger it makes you a lot more vulnerable and so on um and and finally the the last reason why uh why ethereum uh, seems to be having a lot of problems is because there's a lot of mercenary coders in that Ethereum ecosystem. Uh, you know, Bitcoin, you have a lot of people that are working on it because uh, without getting paid uh, because they like the technology, they, they believe in it, they want to contribute to it and so on. A lot of the Ethereum people, they're doing it because they can do an ICO. They can make money. They can print their own money. They can uh, they can make lots and lots of money. Uh, you know, being being a rent seeker in the Ethereum ecosystem, whether or not it's uh, taxing particular transactions or whatever, uh, or, or uh, particular type of development, um, having the ear of the uh, you know big, uh, the Ethereum Foundation and so on. Uh, you have a lot of mercenaries, and uh, and that means that they don't really care as much about their craft uh, as as much as say people that really have their soul into something um you know a lot of the bitcoin developers have a lot of big bitcoin but you know kind of work for free they're 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 doing it um because they believe in it and they have skin in the game a lot of the ethereum devs they, they might have some ethereum but it was something that was kind of given to them it's uh it's it's not it, they're they're not as into it as mercenaries, right? It's the difference between hiring contractors uh, versus building it yourself. Um, you're you're going to care a lot more. So, I mean, those are three reasons that I think Ethereum keeps having problems, including this uh, the, the, this most recent hard fork with the vulnerabilities and so on. It's it's just way too complicated. It's way too centralized, and you have too many mercenaries working on it. Anyway, hope that helps you. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm sure I'll get a lot of disagreement. This song is...